Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're gonna to be looking at Kleos from Cardek Playing Cards. Achilles was a hero of the Trojan War, a mythical warrior said to be the strongest in Greece. But his legendary tale all began with a simple choice, when his mother revealed to him that there were two possible paths available to him. In one, he would abandon the war, marry a good wife, father a large family, and die happy at an old age. But his name would eventually fade into oblivion. Or he could choose to press on in the war, living a tragically short life that would inevitably end in death in the battlefield. He would never see his home again, but he would die a legend and his name would become immortal. Achilles was given the choice between Nostos, homecoming, and Kleos, glory. Of course, Achilles chose Kleos, and his bravery and skill would serve as a rallying cry for the soldiers around him. While he would eventually fall to an arrow from Paris at the end of the war, his name has indeed become one of myth, eternally told in stories like Homer's Iliad. Achilles had achieved the ultimate expression of Kleos. Now, thousands of years later, Kardec brings the concept of Kleos to his latest deck, a futuristic imagining of ancient Greek mythology. It's a deck very much in keeping with Kardec's style of injecting unexpected twists to classic mythology, following offerings like Akaton with its take on Egyptian stories, as well as Zodiacai, which gave a futuristic turn to ancient Zodiac. So let's check out this latest deck that goes after Greek mythology, my favorite stories out there. Uh, and this particular one tells the story of gods who laid in wait for centuries, ready to unleash their power once more on the world. This time, a combination of those ancient forces and futuristic mechanics. And there's two different versions of the deck. We have the dark one here. This is Nyx, named for the goddess of the night. And then the lighter one here is Eos, dedicated to the goddess of the sky. I'll look at both of them, but let's start off with Nyx. All right, so starting with the tuck box, it's done on the uh, kind of a slate gray or almost black cardstock, and it's covered with really deep embossing and a super striking foil. You get a combination of this orange kind of cracked ice foil mixed in with the sparkly rainbow blue foil. It's a beautiful look to it overall, and the design brings together elements of ancient Greece along with the kind of futuristic mech that we'll see. Uh, highlighted throughout the deck. So you get kind of a Tron look to it in the background, especially with those lines in the background. Uh, and then the image of a Corinthian helmet, one of the ancient style of helmets that many of the Greeks would have worn here on the front, complete with a little meander pattern there, another classic Greek pattern in the center of the helmet. Beautiful look to it all. And, and that foil just sparkles in the light. It's a really cool look to it. Combined with that deep embossing makes this an outstanding tuck box. Name of the deck is here on the side in that blue rainbow foil. It says Kleos on both sides of the deck. Bottom has some ad copies. So these were printed by Legends Playing Card Company. And you can see Cardex logo over there. Top just has some more design work and kind of a style of a meander over there. Uh, and then the back has another kind of mixture image. This is an image of Athena's owl, a uh, sign of wisdom, and it's uh, one of her constant companions. So you can see the face of the owl there, again done in that orange and blue, uh, but definitely given that kind of mech upgrade with the kind of futuristic look to it, almost like it's a robot. Very cool look to this one. Pairs really well with the image on the front to form, again, just a really striking tuck box. And it's sealed with a metallic silver seal here, has the meander pattern in the center, and then it's numbered out of the 850 deck edition. So you open up the inner flap, more details here, mixture of the mechs and then that meander pattern yet again, and nothing printed on the interior of the tuck box. Don't mind not having interior printing. I would have liked the foil to continue here on these smaller flaps though. I think that looks a little bit void, unfortunately. But there is the tuck box, an outstanding tuck, and definitely one that'll stand out on the shelf with that unique coloring and style of the foil. All right, but now on to the cards, and we'll start with the back design. All right, so here it is. So uh, again, kind of bringing in some of those futuristic themes. This one definitely feels inspired by Tron with those almost neon colors, the oranges and the blue lines against that black background. Uh, the image here is an image of kind of four owls here, all reaching towards the center. Again, a depiction of Athena's owl. Athena was the goddess of wisdom and the owl, her symbol. 
And then this is a little bit harder for me to see, but the campaign mentions that uh, the owls kind of come together to form a minotaur face in the center. I guess I can kind of see it here with like the talons maybe forming the eyes here in the middle and then the wings forming the horns of the minotaur. Uh, a little bit abstract. I definitely see the owls better than I see the minotaur. Oh, actually, no, now I see it. Actually, maybe these blue bits are the eyes and then these are the nostrils down here. I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, that's kind of the two-sided design that's meant to be here in the center uh, with a little meander pattern again in the middle uh, and then a full two-way back design. I like the color of this one. I think these little bits on the side may be a little bit devoid of detail. I think maybe incorporating some of the brighter colors in the edges would help this pop a little bit more, but overall, not a bad back design at all. All right, and now on to the cards, and we'll start with the two Jokers. And this is where we see the first of the character work in the deck. And this is definitely a highlight of the artwork of the deck itself. Uh, this one starts with a pair of mythical creatures, each done on these beautiful one-way style. I love one-way style cards. Uh, you know, I'm not using these for gameplay or magic or anything, certainly not a deck like this. And so getting to see the extra artwork, I think really helped for me. Uh, this one depicts Medusa on one side and then the Minotaur on the other, but each of them given that mecha upgrade. So kind of a mixture of human or, uh, you know, organic and uh, mechanical elements kind of brought together. Really cool look, you know, uh, Medusa here almost looks like Doc Ock with the um, with the snakes in her hair kind of forming these uh, twisting arms all the way up there. And then the body of a snake down there. And then the Minotaur looks impressive and imposing. Those turquoise colors really match well with the orange. So really cool artwork on these. Uh, you know, just kind of a unique take on the mythology. And if you've seen some of the other decks like Zodiacai, uh, you may recognize that kind of style that uh, Cardex has been bringing in several decks recently. All right, then on to the four aces, and here they are. So uh, the, uh, I guess I'll call it the black cards are done with the orange pips, and then the red cards done with the blue pips. Uh, and gotta say, very cool look to this, the patterning on them overall, you get the large pip in the center, and then surrounded by kind of a spidering of primarily blue uh, against that black background. Really cool look to it overall. Criticism on this, it is a little bit hard to distinguish between the suits. I mean, even if you look at the two orange suits, definitely looks similar. And if I'm trying to equate these to like spades or clubs, diamonds, hearts, very hard to tell which one is which. Now there is uh, some thematic elements on these. Each one of these uh, pip shapes is meant to depict uh, a very abstract representation of a classic, uh, item from Greek mythology. So we have the Spear of Ares with a point here represented on this one. This is the uh, Trident of Poseidon. You can kind of make out the three points there forming a trident. Uh, this one is the Flame of Prometheus. You can see the flame uh, creeping up into the skies there. Prometheus was said to have brought fire to humans uh, after stealing it from the gods. And then the Shield of Athena is the final one. So love the names of the pips. Wish they'd been a little bit more differentiated just in case you wanted to use this for gameplay, but some cool artwork on them nonetheless. Uh, number cards feature those same pips against that black kind of 3D. It definitely looks kind of like an 80s video game style or Tron style again, uh, kind of going off into the distance. A little bit uh, void there in the center. Wish there had been a little bit more detail instead of just the black in there, uh, but some cool borders on this one that give it you know, more of that futuristic vibe overall. So there's your Spear of Ares, I guess I'll call them. Maybe that's meant to be the spades. These are the uh, Trident of Poseidon cards. So seven of Tridents, I guess I'll call that. And then there's the Flame of Prometheus, or the clubs if you prefer. And finally, the Shield of Athena, or the hearts. So there's your number cards. And then we get into the courts. And the courts all represent the main pantheon of gods. And so each one of them is gonna be a depiction of one of the gods. Uh, some of them a little bit easier to pick out who's who than others, uh, but all of them kind of, again, bringing those characters into the 21st or even the 22nd century with a real mech, um, you know, mecha overhaul of their characters. All bringing in those oranges and the blues that we've seen throughout the rest of the deck. And we'll run through the characters so you can get a little bit of a closer look, starting with the Jack here. And this is a, a depiction of uh, Apollo here. So he was the god of music, among other things. So you can see his classic lyre there in his hands. That's how you can tell it's him. 
you know, kind of a cheeky look on his face there. Uh, next up as the queen here, this is Aphrodite, who is the goddess of beauty. Uh, and so you can see her there with a little bit of a provocative pose, has little butterflies going around her and kind of a cool swirling look. I love the dynamicism of the poses. Uh, although the artwork, you know, very, very detailed. I know, very uh, atypical for court cards for me. All right, so the kings are always gonna be some of the most powerful. And of course, this one is no exception. This is Ares, the god of war. You can see him ready to go off to battle. He's wearing uh, elements of classic uh, warrior garb with the shield and the helmet, and then has his spear in hand. Moving on to the next one, this is Dionysus, who is the uh, god of wine. You see him there with the uh, glass of white wine in his hands. Uh, definitely has, um, I know, kind of looks like a teenager there with the sunglasses in his hand and that uh, sort of cocky look on his face. And then next up as the, uh, as the queen here, this is Athena, the goddess of wisdom. You can see her owl there in the background. Uh, and that beautiful turquoise color against the black, I think works really well. And then the king, this is uh, Hades, the god of the underworld, the god of death. And so the scythe there, uh, classic symbol throughout so many different cultures is a symbol of death. Death would wield that scythe to claim the souls of the dead. Uh, and so there is the uh, mech interpretation of Hades. All right, now on to the jack, uh, to the next jack. This is uh, the builder god, Hephaestus. Uh, always been one of my favorite gods. Uh, he would wield a hammer and he was the one who made all of the weapons of the other gods. Love that menacing look on his face. Uh, a lot of mythologies say he was actually particularly ugly. Uh, so don't know how that matters in this particular deck. This is not a particularly ugly card or anything, but always found that interesting. Uh, after Hephaestus, we come to Hera. Uh, Hera was the uh, queen of the gods, uh, Zeus's wife. I can see her depicted there, very kind of proud uh, look on her face. And speaking of Zeus, the next king is, of course, Zeus wielding his lightning bolt. He was the king of the gods, the ruler of all the gods, and the mightiest of all, and said to have thunder at his command. All right, and then one more suit to go. And so we start here with the final jack. This is Hermes, uh, who is the messenger god. Uh, said to be incredibly fast, and so he would carry messages to and from the gods. Uh, after Hermes, we come to Artemis, uh, the huntress and the goddess of the moon. So you can see the bow and arrow there, a dead giveaway as to who she is. Uh, and then finally, we have Poseidon, the god of the sea, the waves swirling above his head and his classic trident in hand. So really cool artwork on these. Definitely interesting, you know, not necessarily as familiar as playing cards uh, overall. You know, this is definitely more of an art deck than a deck you'd want to use. Uh, but I do appreciate that the gods and goddesses depicted in here, all fairly easy to pick out who's who. There's always elements in there that make it a little bit easier to pick out who's who. So always like that instead of leaving you guessing on which court is which. Uh, and so that is the Nyx version of the deck. There is one more to check out with Eos. Uh, this one is, for the most part, a color swap. There's a couple of cards different than this one, but for the most part, a color swap from the NYX version. Uh, this one's done on the white tuck, this time with the blue cracked ice pattern and the gold holographic foil. Really nice striking look. Uh, I love the contrast of the two decks together. I think they look fantastic in their tucks. Uh, but you can see the same artwork on this one, just with the different coloring. Also numbered out of 850, just like the other one. And then we get into the cards. And obviously some color changes on the cards as well, just like with the deck. Uh, starting with the back design. This one done with the white background and then the blues and those sort of metallic golds and silvers. Same artwork, but on this one definitely feels a little bit flatter to me. It definitely falls a good bit flatter compared to the black version of the card where this one kind of had that cool Tron vibe to it. This one just feels like it needs more. Maybe it's that silver and gold that sort of fades into the background. You don't see it as well, but whatever it is, don't like this version of the back design as much as I did with the NYX version. Uh, and that holds true on some of the cards as well. Now you do get two cards that are different from the uh, NYX version of the deck. Two more mythological creatures highlighted as the Jokers. This one uses Pegasus, the famed winged horse there in the blue and gold. Uh, and then the Hydra, that many-headed creature uh, that Hercules actually had to fight as one of his labors. 
So again, cool artwork. Uh, but for me, that white background just flattens the entire design. You'll see some of the color changes here. So the blue and gold pips uh, instead of the orange and blue that we saw before. Uh, still nice color schemes. There's some cool artwork and some interesting artwork going through here, but everything just feels like a lot more empty with the white in the background. Uh, so wish there'd been a little bit more. This deck just doesn't hit quite as well for me as the other version. And then getting into the core cards, you'll see the same artwork. Now this is one area where I think the white background does work a little bit better with the super detailed looks of the core cards. I think they somehow pop a little bit better against the white background, kind of let you focus in on the details of the character themselves uh, a little bit better in this version of the deck. But for me, it doesn't make up for the other elements of the deck that I think are superior in the next version of the deck. But as you can see, other than some color swaps into the blue and gold, basically the same artwork featured on these cards as we saw on the others. And that is the EOS version of the deck. So Nyx in the black and EOS in the white. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, as far as which one I prefer, I think probably pretty clear as we went through, Nyx version overall takes the cake for me. So if you're gonna, just going to pick up one of them, this is the one that I'd go for. But hope you enjoyed this look at Kleos from Cardek Playing Cards. Always love the decks. They're always an interesting take. And the exploration of the delving into mythology is always going to be a hit with me. So hope you enjoyed this one. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to pick these decks up for yourself. They are available for uh, for sale now. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews, more unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see, and I'll see you for the next one.